Barnier, the president of the European Strategic Intelligence and Security Centre. Uh, Mr. Monique, thank you very much uh, for joining us here on France 24. Now, uh, France introduced tougher anti-terror laws only six months ago. What does this attack say about those measures and their efficiency? Uh, I, I, I'm not so sure it says something about the efficiency of the, the, the new law we have in France. It says something about the scale of the, of the threat we face. That's, that's for sure. The problem is not really the law. I think today we have all the tools, the legal tools, which allow the, the state to, to, to answer the, 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 the threat and, and to face the threat. But the problem is that we have so many people which are potentially involved in terrorist activities. We have on, on, on uh, uh, approximately 20,000 people which have uh, S file, uh, approximately 13,000 uh, are linked to jihadists, uh, at least to, to, to uh, uh, extremist Islam, and some of them to Salafism. And on those, those 13,000, dozens are uh, extremely dangerous. So it's impossible to, to survey anyone. That's what this story tells us. Now, France is no stranger to terror, uh, suffering a string of attacks in recent years. Uh, state of emergency or no state of emergency, are these events something that the country just has to live with now? We have to, to, to understand, I think that the public must understand that, uh, yes, we, we have to, to live with this threat. It's a war. I mean, it's clearly a war, and uh, in the war you have some. Uh, some day you are you are successful, and some day you, you, you are not. Uh, this is of course terrible when people are lying on the ground and and, and bleeding, but it's it's just true. Uh, in the, in uh, 17 in 2017, approximately 20 attacks were avoided due to the to, to the, the, the the work of the security services and intelligence services. But some of them uh, were successful. In, in 2008, already two attacks were avoided, but some will continue to happen, and this will last for a long time, I'm afraid. Now, the suspect was living under the noses of uh, police, apparently uh, only a few hundred metres uh, from, uh, from the police headquarters. Uh, he was on their radar, so the, the big question now is how was he able to, uh, to, to slip through the net? Yes, but it's the same question we we asked three years ago in uh, on January 7, the Kouachi brothers, when they when they uh, when they attacked and and, and killed the, the 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 journalist in Charlie Hebdo or Char or, or Koulibaly a, a, a few days uh, later were already known by the, the the security services. They were under the radar. They were they went in jail for terrorism related uh, offences, and the, it's still they were able to, to prepare their, their plots uh, because it's impossible to put an, a, a police officer uh, behind uh, any, any suspect. And it is not one police officer you must put behind the suspect. To survey one person, you need between 30 and 40, uh, and 40 police officers or intelligence officers. This is just not possible. Okay, so it's a question of resources then. Uh, Mr. Yes. Monique, thank you once again very much for 